Good morning, it's uh, Jonathan Barrett with the morning debrief. It's uh, April the 29th and uh, obviously the dust is trying to settle on beleaguered Greece and also uh, Spain and uh, or Portugal and Spain. Uh, Spain's obviously uh, come into the fray as well. Um, interesting that last night the equity markets, um, particularly in Europe, were certainly under a lot more pressure. Uh, the euro actually held up quite nicely, which was quite interesting. Uh, but the markets and states actually managed uh, a bit of a rally, up uh, 53 points of the Dow. So uh, I think uh, uh, things are changing. Uh, Merkel came out uh, and basically said that, look, we're going to help, we're going to fast track a few things for Greece. And that certainly placated the market to a certain extent. I guess the key concern we do have is whether or not this is going to uh, spread uh, to other European countries and uh, what, as a consequence, would occur if that did occur. Um, you would have noticed that yesterday, quite interesting, that we saw... Um, the US dollar firm and also gold and that gave us uh, a bit of a clue that people uh, were concerned about this contagion spreading and also the breakdown of the euro. Personally I feel that won't occur <clears throat> but the market decided to take it on that way and that's why we saw gold uh, have that very large move up around the 11.72. Okay, uh, let's uh, go through and have a little bit of a snapshot as to uh, what occurred uh, again. Um, the Dow as I mentioned up 53 points, 11,045. The S&P was up 7.6, the NASDAQ was up 0.26. And as you can see, when you look at uh, what happened in Europe, uh, there's quite a turnaround there uh, because the stock was down 1.77%. Uh, the FTSE was down 16, but closer to Portugal and Spain, you see the uh, DAX sat down 75 and the CAC down 57. So uh, that uh, highlights the continuing concern. Um, obviously, uh, one of the big things, Rubini, uh, came out and says it's the tip of the iceberg concerning, concerning sovereign debt issues and that this will threaten the recovery. Uh, we have seen a little bit of a tip in some of the primary imports, but I think the market might be European and uh, US focused. The US seems to be coming out. Now, this is a European situation, how that will affect. It will affect growth, but uh, I think while we're still seeing emerging countries continuing to grow, um, I think it's uh, something that is not a huge focus, but it's certainly something to remain close to. Okay, stocks rise, we mentioned that, uh, some profits there, Visa profits climbed 33%, um, you, that would not surprise you considering how much they charge us, uh, so, uh, so that's quite positive, but also shows that people are actually spending, uh, so uh, if anything they're relatively nice and good to see that the, uh, the Dow actually closed up, uh, obviously 53 points on the back of those earnings reports. Okay, let's have a look at um, our usual market stuff. And as we normally do, we start off with um, dollar index to give us a bit of a clue as to what happened there. And we work our way through some of the commodities and, uh, and also the economic numbers due. Uh, dollar index, uh, just looking at it there from last night's trading. As you can see, she has come off from its highs. And uh, we had that high up around that 82.65. Now, look, there's not much you can do here. I mean, we've got divergence here as well. And, um, and that indicates that a dollar should come under pressure. Um, I would be guided by that 82.25 level, and if I break through that, then I will then start to um, start to sell dollars. In fact, I'll be looking at that euro um, as as the reason euro and perhaps some of the others. Let's have a look at that euro chart. And as you can see, we had a low there, quite a big dip, and let's move that across a bit. Here we go. We had quite a large dip uh, last night, but as you can see, with all the new news, it failed to really do stuff. And uh, I think that low there down that 131.15, I don't mind a dip back to um, that 31.70 or in fact um, given uh, today I might actually look to dip in. I will let you know on twi Twitter when I do do that, uh, but I'm getting pretty close to have it because I feel that Europe is a, is a, is a, is a problem, but I don't think it's that much of a problem uh, at the moment and I think people are willing to bail it out. And uh, with that sort of rhetoric there, I, I've got to start to be a little bit more confident. There's the daily chart, but there are the lows previously we've had. I think that's a major double bottom, um, but if we are buying the euro, then make sure we put a stop in below the low of their low, which is around that uh, 131.15 area. Okay, so that's that's an important thing, because I have seen it where the trend stays there. And they say a trend's your friend. We're having a go here at trying to pick a low or an aggressive low here, so it's only a small position. Okay, so nothing too too aggressive. Okay, so that's it. Have a quick look at the Aussie as well. 92.50, very volatile night last night and um, mixed in terms of um, momentum indicators. But uh, that sort of price action there, this, have a look at this because I think when you look at this price action from there, there's a nice trend developing here. 
and uh, obviously on the downside as well. So uh, if, it, uh, if, if, it, if it went through that level, then we could see this finally test through that uh, 95, 96 area. So stay close to that one. Okay, having a quick look at the SPY. Um, for those that do know, we did close out our SPY yesterday, yesterday afternoon on the close, 48.24. Um, that was the right move. I was quite happy about that, and um, yeah, took some profit home on that one. And um, 48.32 is where it's traded. Um, because we've had that little bit of a bounce, we might actually see this actually trade a little bit higher tonight today. Probably test that breakdown level. I'll decide what I want to do from there on in. But uh, at the moment, I think the right right form of news there is to uh, cover the shorts there for short term. Uh, that's having a look at that. Uh, looking at some of the primary inputs. Uh, crude had a bit of a bounce last night, which was good, and um, we've put out our crude report, crude review. So um, if you uh, if you have a look at it, um, yeah, you can see what we're actually feeling there. Uh, call your broker, or if you're on the list, you should get it for free. Um, there's no problems there at all. Uh, that's the crude review. And as you can see, a little bit of a lift there, and now on that optimism, which I do like. Okay, uh, so that's that. Um, uh, copper under pressure due to obviously economic concerns. And uh, we are short there, as you know. Uh, FUD did not take profit because I wanted to see what was happening there. But I think um, I'll be having a good look at that over the next uh, day as to what uh, we should do. We are short from good levels, so I'm not too, too fussed at the moment on that one. Um, apart from that, everything else, sugar continues to disappoint. A huge move to the downside last night. We're still long very small positions, and we have light in some of that position. So it's not too heavy, but I think we will have to nut it out. Uh, looking at corn and wheat, uh, corn in itself, uh, caught in itself, um, sort of a mixed night up a little bit, as with uh, with wheat as well. But as you can see, I still feel that's trying to find a low, find a little bit of a bottom there. Um, as you can see, they're extremely volatile, but uh, I still like it, still within that uh, uh, ascending wedge, which we've been following. Uh, soybeans came back largely, as you know, we took out our positions on that, so happy about that. And uh, that's coming back to more reasonable areas. Still concerns that of drought, and China still needs to import, so I think they're only looking at a dip. And uh, when I look at wheat, it's the same. Sugar, there we go, you can see it there. Sugar is the big one, which is an issue. Uh, sugar, 14.56, that's a huge move last night. And um, I think, if anything, there, back down to the, the, the amazing market, when you, when you look at the, the hourly, I mean, it, it's obviously a trend's your friend on that. But uh, look at that, it's lost close to 50, over 50% 50 of its value uh, since the beginning of the year. And, um, you know, it's, uh, the market is certainly well entrenched short. And um, that's, a, that's a huge move. Uh, we had concerns there of increased yields in Brazil. And of course, we had that record crop in India hurting that. OK, so that's about it on that side. Uh, just looking at the economic news coming out. Uh, most important stuff, we've got a Eurozone, Eurozone confidence. Uh, we've got the uh, initial jobless claims in the States. A whole raft of data out of Japan today, including CPI, industrial production, and the like. So there's plenty of stuff on there at the moment. So uh, if anything there, quite a volatile uh, couple of days. Um, I guess the, the most important things are what positions do we hold in the market at the moment. Um, we're still short copper. We closed out the SPY position yesterday, so I'm happy about that. And I'm um, still looking to, I haven't looked at that euro, as I said, I haven't really gone in yet, but I'm getting very close to it, So, but I'll let you know on Twitter when that happens. Well, that's about it from me. I hope you have a great day, and uh, happy trading, and we'll talk to you tomorrow.